Hi guys, it's Mr. Romero up on, uh, this, we're up at about 2,800 feet, 2,800 feet here at what they call Elk Rock. It's an elk, elk viewing area. You can see behind me is Mount St. Helens. Okay, Mount St. Helens is up around where that, where that cloud bank is. Okay, and if you look down, kind of follow down, okay, this is the, this is the river. This is the river that was filled with debris, volcanic ash, and melted glacier and snow water. That's what we call a lahar. A lahar flowed down all this river. It, 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 it actually changed the direction and the angle of how the river flowed because there was so much debris that came down at one time. Now, when that happened, um, it filled all this canyon with over 400 feet of volcanic ash, over 400 feet of volcanic ash filled this entire canyon here. And as time went on, river started flowing again. As the river flowed, it started to fill in, started to cut its way down through, just like the Colorado River and geologic processes cut through uh, into the Grand Canyon. So again, this is, and if you look at the forest across the way, it is mostly fir trees, mostly fir trees. Many of those, many of those trees were blown down in the initial blast of Mount St. Helens. Those were all planted. Those are all planted trees. And you can kind of see it looks like an optical illusion. It looks like all trees that are all one size. Well, in, in reality, they are all one size because they were planted at the same time, around 1986, shortly after the 1980 eruption. So now you have a lush forest ecosystem, okay? you have a river ecosystem, and if we could, if we could see down there far enough, we'd actually be able to see elk as well. So, we're gonna make our way up to, if you kind of look at the summit of Mount St. Helens, we're gonna make our way up that way now, and we will talk to you in a little bit.